Hey everyone, welcome to Wednesday Night in the Word. I am so excited to get in the Word with you tonight. If it's your first time with us, this is gonna be about a 10 minute teaching and today we're going to be focused on resisting the enemy, fighting back against the enemy and overcoming the enemy. I'm not sure about you, but that is something that I need right now. I think our world needs right now, our church needs right now, our families need right now because the enemy is up to no good. He is roaring around and moving around and trying to attack and take us all out and some of us don't even recognize it. Um, I was thinking about something though. This past weekend, my wife, she uh, fixed an amazing cake uh, for the 4th of July. Actually, she didn't really fix it. She bought an angel food cake. She got uh, strawberries and blueberries and whipped cream and chocolate. And then she had another chocolate cake. And then the other night she also made uh, chocolate chip cookies. I mean, we had all these sweets in our house. And because they were in the house, it was so hard to resist them. I mean, just looking at them and thinking about them and knowing they were in the house, it was practically impossible to resist them. I think that that is uh, a part of our spiritual uh, life as well. As long as we allow something to linger around, it's hard to resist what is there. The cake was in the house and I wanted the cake so I could not resist it. I've ate it and ate it and continued to eat it and get more chocolate and it's in the house so I want it and it's almost impossible to resist it. Isn't that like our spiritual life? Isn't it? Um, and I think that the problem with our spiritual life is that what you resist continues to uh, persist, meaning that resisting implies that something is still there. But I read in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse five, it says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I think the reason we are easily defeated by temptation is because we try to resist it instead of refocusing, instead of getting rid of it. So to, to, to overcome the enemy, we can't just resist, we must refocus or we must get rid of what is in our life that we're trying to resist. If we can just refocus and not even look at the cake, not even give it attention, instead look at the, the healthy food in the house, then that is how we can overcome that temptation. And in our spiritual life, instead of trying to resist it and even give it a, a look, a thought, we need to refocus our minds on something new. Romans 12, 21 says, do not, con do not, be, con do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So if we want to defeat temptation, we don't need to fight it. We need to change our focus completely. Don't even give it a thought. Because if your mind is filled with good thoughts, there is no room for ones that may tempt us to sin. I wrote it down like this, that good always overcomes evil. So if we can um, instead even give the attention and try to resist the evil, and only look to what is good, that's how we can defeat the enemy in our life. Jesus came so that we may have the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to overcome the enemy. We must tap into that and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us to what is good and not even look to what the enemy is presenting to us as evil. And I think that during this pandemic, while you're staying home more, you may be facing reoccurring temptations. And I don't know what those temptations may be for you, but whatever those areas are for you, you'll get discouraged if you keep trying to fight against them, particularly if you continue to give in. And I think that's where some of us may be. The key is to refocus your attention on something else, something of God, something of good. What is good comes from God. So if we can not resist, but refocus on good things, like don't even give that thing which the enemy's tempting you with attention. Don't even look at it. Refocus your mind on that which is good. And here's an example, okay? If you're tempted while watching TV, don't keep telling yourself, I'm not going to watch this. I'm not gonna watch this anymore. Instead, pick up the remote and actually change the channel to something that is good and edifying. Temptation always starts with a thought. 
The enemy loves to get in your mind and your thoughts. If Satan can get your attention, you can be tempted. You kind of like advertising, right? Advertising use the, you, advertisers use this same tactic. They get your attention and then engage your emotions so you move from attention to emotions to an actions. They get your attention with this beautiful thing, this shiny thing that engage your emotions and this advertising. And the next thing you know, you act on it and purchase it. And maybe some of us even get it over our head and get something we never wanted. That's what advertising does. And that's how Satan works. He wants to get your attention, to get a hold of your emotions that then get you to take action. But if we can just turn it off and refocus our attention on that which is good, that is so much better. Um, how about hunger, right? Think about hunger for a second. Um, somebody says to you, are you hungry? And really you're not even hungry, but even just that uh, thought of hunger, that temptation makes you go, oh, you know what? Yeah, I am hungry. Let me eat. Or are you tired? and you're really not tired, but even somebody mentioning, hey, are you tired? Leads you to begin to think, oh, you know what? I think I am tired and I am a little worn down. What I want you to know is that whatever gets your attention gets you. So what are you paying attention to? Whatever gets your attention gets you. So what are you paying attention to? I think many of us need to refocus to focus our minds on things that are good, not, not what are bad. The media right now, the world right now wants us to focus on things that are just dragging our minds into places we do not need to be. And we're living out in this area focused on things that are not good. But whatever gets your attention gets you. So what are you focusing on? Let's focus on that which is good. Philippians 4.8, I love this scripture. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Quit thinking and giving attention to that which is ugly and negative and full of hate and start thinking on those things that are pure and good. The more you fight it, a tempting thought or feeling, the more it controls you. So don't fight it. Refocus and replace your thoughts with things that are good and make you more like Jesus. Here's the last thing I want to say to you tonight. I think we need to refocus and replace and reprioritize our life. We need to refocus, replace, and reprioritize. If there's things filling your heart and your soul and your mind and your spirit and your vision that are ugly and negative and full of sin and hate and temptation and, and lust, we need to replace that, refocus and reprioritize our life. The enemy may have you thinking that something's important that is not. The enemy may have you thinking that you need to focus on something that you do not. So it's time to replace and reprioritize our life today. That which is good, that which is noble, true, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Quit allowing to wor the world to control you and instead pick up the word, guys, and let the word of God direct you to what, direct you, to what you need to do, to how you need to live, to how you need to think. There's a fight going on and we can overcome it by not resisting, but replacing that which is of the enemy to that which is of God. Let's do that tonight. Refocus our heart, replace, reprioritize. That's what we need to be doing and refocus what we are thinking about and on. God has something good for us, but if we allow the enemy to distract us and our priorities to get all out of whack, we have a battle on our hands, and that's where it begins, in your heart and in your mind. Let's get in the Word, know the Word, fall in love with the God of the Word, and share this Word with the world. I love you guys, and I'm thanking you for joining us tonight. Now, if you will, tonight we're going to spend uh, 30 minutes on Zoom for a follow-up chat. Um, so please, join me right now on Zoom for our follow-up chat. 
Uh, if you need the password, if you need the information, just put it in the comments below and I can get that to you. And uh, we'll spend 30 minutes just chatting over this word. I hope you're having a great evening. God bless. And I'll see you in just a second. Thank you.